Okay, here we have a very quick and easy demonstration on how to use the Terrapiano 3D embossing paste. You need some paste. If you want to colour the paste, you can use 10% paint to do so. I've got a French grey here. Uh, a couple of different types of knives, depending on what you prefer to use. A blade to actually apply the paste, uh, and spoons just to mix up the paste. The stencils themselves are 1.2 millimetres thick, uh, and you just need some masking tape to hold that in place while you're working with it. Okay, you don't actually need a lot of the paste, it's like a mousse. It's very easy to work with. It's probably going to be too much. As I'm colouring this, I'm going to put it on the wall. I need enough. Okay, a little bit of paint. So we've got the French grey. About 10% is the maximum, although I don't think I'm going to be using quite that much because I don't want it too dark. Any colour you like, it all works brilliantly. Mix that in. Very simple to do. I'm doing it on a plate because it's easier to actually get the knife onto the paste to apply it once you actually want to put it on the wall instead of trying to dip yourself into toss. Especially if you're using a biggish blade. Okay, it's as simple as that one. Coloured terpiano. Okay, I've actually put the masking tape onto the stencil, ready for it to be stuck to the wall. You just position it like so. Securing the stencil with the tape, ready to do your masterpiece. You simply squeeze it into the stencil like so, catching the bits and pieces with your knife. You hold the stencil to the wall, there's no danger of it lifting because if it lifts, that's when the problems start because you will end up with uh, smudges. So that tiny bit of paste has done all of that on the stencil, but it does go an awful long way. You don't actually need to use very much at all. And once you get quite adept at this, do it quite quickly. It does take about an hour or so to start to go off, so you're not in any danger of it drying on you while you're doing your work. And I do love doing this. I don't know whether it's because it's so easy or whether it's because it's so effective, maybe it's so. But the effects, I think, are just stunning. It's still that first little bit is, is going all that way. Work it all the way down through the lettering. You can see once it's filled because the white of the wall is not showing through. Last little bit. Hold the stencil down when you get to the middle bit because that's the only time it's likely to lift. It's just the viscosity of the paste when it's on the blade. When you move your blade, it can actually just lift the stencil up slightly. Illuminating the effect. And there we go. Now this is the good bit. When you remove the stencil, you have to be really careful not to move it sideways. You need to peel it away from the area, coming away from the area, and there is the finished result. Ta-da! I say say. What could possibly be easier than that? Beautiful, beautiful stencils, three-dimensional, in your own home, on your walls, on your furniture, wherever you like to put it. The desk, 
with the script on at an angle, shows its versatility, you can just about see the three dimensional effect, the shadow, this is actually painted in the same colour as the desk, so it's pure shadow that's showing that up, and with a little bit of imagination, you can drape it down onto the drawer below. What an effect. Okay, there we have a nearly finished article, scraping the excess off, and the final little part. Absolutely gorgeous, I do love this. Okay, you can sand it down if you want it a little less obvious, or you can just leave it as it is and paint straight over the top, it's entirely up to you. You can do different paint effects, you could just wash over it with the white paint. Whatever you do, it's still going to look absolutely gorgeous. Remembering to pull the stencil away from the wall. And that's how many takes will allow you. And there is an absolutely stunning fleur-de-lis.